little more about your own brand. What does Brand Weaver mean? Where did it um, come from? How long did it take for you to, um, for that specific wording to work for you? And um, you know, how long did it take for your logo to come out and all? Sure. Okay. Well, um, I did some work up to a couple of years ago as part of an opportunity to be involved with one of my client's projects. And he has this wonderful product called The Game, Experience the Game. And, um, and he had an invitation to actually design an image which would be used as a card um, as part of this, uh, as a sponsored card, as part of a kind of a very much a, 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 a game that facilitates relationship and connection with people. And so I had um, an opportunity right then to immediately jump into this archetype which has been in my mind for a long time, which I call the brand weaver, or really it's, it's, you could also say the visionary leader. And so the, the image I had at the moment was kind of um, an American Indian shaman type image who was standing and reaching into um, the heavens at twilight and um, with a kind of Native American um, desert image. I live here in Utah where um, the desert's very iconic and it's, it's always been a place for me of, of deep um, stillness, emptiness, and inspiration because, because of that, in fact, because of it's just so um, still and empty. And so I would say that the kind of is, the installation of that vision was that of this, this brand weaver um, archetype, this, this shaman who really goes and seeks deep, deep vision, you know, goes alone and does what you need to do in order to, to really make a genuinely great insight. And I think that crosses over very well in terms of what I, I like to call a quantum leap um, insights, basically, in, in, our, in the kind of service I, that I bring to, to branding, which is to go and really find a way to get so far beyond how things have ever been thought um, in terms of the particular project that they can be expressed in an entirely new way that still at the same time will link um, and, tr and bridge what people know to what people can can know. So it's that kind of bridging process. And so that, that basically um, has been like the vision I've had from the very beginning. And Bren Weaver is also Weaver being the storyteller, the mythological, um, the, the mythology maker, so to speak. So where, when you discover that core essence, that core brand, then how, how is that woven into each piece of the expression of a business? And so to me, it's extremely core that uh, the name fits so appropriately to, to the whole idea of, of you know, what, what I call before the religious piece, or you could also call them a mythological piece, um, and bringing that into a business. And, um, you know, so it all kind of came together relatively quickly. But the logo itself has a very modern feel to it, um, almost uh, 21st century plus in terms of the, the typography, but that's also contrasted with this very ancient um, appearance of um, the desert and, and stillness and darkness. So I, I really like to blend the, the art of, you know, basically classical shamanistic approach to, you know, deep vision seeking with 21st century, with 21st century um, technology and 21st century visionary it's where things are going, basically. So um, that's kind of how I like to piece it together. Wonderful. Well, we have a whole bunch of questions from Dramatron uh, in the chat room. First, for those people who are just joining us, we're speaking with Chris Stacer of Brandweaver. Um, if people want to check out your website, where can they go? Uh, this is brandweaver.tv, like television. Great. So um, we were discussing earlier a little bit about how you uh, reach your clients or how you find your clients. So John just was wondering how you go about doing that. Um, just to touch 
briefly on what we were talking about earlier is the law of attraction. And really, by setting the clear intention, Chris um, is able to find the right clients. And of course, through a lot of networking, as business is often <laughs> done. Um, but I'd love to, Jonathan also asks in the chat room how you raised your initial capital, capital for your project, and how did you fund the creation of Brandweaver? Sure. OK, well, just to elaborate a little bit more, I, I find personal contact, you know, personal networking situations to be absolutely the best way to your market, um, at least my business. And so um, I kind of personally think that if you, whatever you do in the social networking world, um, which is becoming very trendy now, um, it's still uh, the seeds that you, you actually plant through, through physically being present and physically being able to meet with people and connect with them on a one-to-one -one basis really it facilitates that extra um, electronic connection to a whole other degree. Uh, in terms of the actual funding of um, my business, really I was lucky in that um, because I have enough design skills and enough of the basic business skills that I simply uh, did it on my own with a little bit of, um, of jumping off of uh, jumping out of a security blanket of a job, um, and through that, and which was actually an intention, um, that, that that's how I actually discovered a social network called um, CEO Space, you know, a, an actual business network. And I, but I discovered that um, as part of an intention to make the leap. Um, so I made it with a little bit of um, less security than uh, in terms of like savings and such than some people might feel comfortable with. But I just did it and um, and use that to create urgency to go forward. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs are really wonderful at doing is taking great risks, especially financially. And every time you take a great risk and you fail, you, you never fail to do another great risk <laughs> and perhaps fail. <laughs> but that's part of being a, an entrepreneur. And I think the, the piece about being a social entrepreneur is very interesting that um, kind of along the religious side that you were talking about before of how social entrepreneurs are really kind of taking this uh, role as more of a religious um, organization where they're trying to pull out truth and create happiness for individuals.